Durthu and all tree men. Yes, I promise Durthu is hidden somewhere in the trees. Can you see him? There he is. Anyway, Durthu and actually all regular tree men and ancient tree men got a pretty significant buff that I actually missed in 5.1, getting this ancient protector ability that negates magical weapons within a fairly tight area of effect. Essentially, that means their physical resistance turns into damage resistance against melee attacks. Pretty strong stuff. Uh, it does deactivate when they are below 50% HP, so definitely gotta be healing them up, but Durthu himself, quite a potent combatant. Um, yeah, I, not the best. I think, well, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that. I think Durthu is very good in a number of ways. I've sort of badmouthed him at times. I think sometimes he's not exactly cost-effective, but given his current sort of state, if we evaluate things holistically, uh, Flock of Doom is very nice, sort of Daith. I don't recall if the damage is... It seems pretty decent. Armor also seems pretty decent. Of course, uh, he's also, like I said, decent combatant, 110 armor. Making that physical resistance matter actually helps quite a bit, given how prevalent magic attacks are in game three. It's pretty important that he has a way to actually make that physical resistance matter, given his melee defense isn't incredible. Again, very good armor. Slow speed, though, that is one of the big downsides, especially when you look at other slower monsters that have much higher weapon strength like uh you know not that sentinels are better given their animation set is much worse but they do have higher weapon strength stuff like giants right think of a lot of other slower uh two legged monsters i say two legged a lot of monsters have a lot more than two legs but you know what i mean walking on two legs monsters the tree men still are probably the lowest weapon strength i would have to look reevaluate that statement actually but uh, just kind of off the cuff it feels that way certainly but bunch of dryads here from right over Rohan. We've got some Swift Shiver Shards, Deepwood Scouts, and some Wild Rangers, uh, sorry, Wild Riders in the back there, uh, including the Regiment of Renown, all vanguarded up, ready to go against Norska. We've got Wolfric on horseback here, a whole mess of Marauders, including some Champs, uh, some Spears as well. Uh, yeah, some more Spears protecting the flanks, supporting those Skin Wolves, and we've got some Beasts of Tashnar here in the back. Looks like a Shadow Famir. Rocking some Melkos and Pit of Shades. Let's see how things go as these champs get into combat. They're going to be more than a match for the Dryads. Swift Shiva Shots. They're going to open fire here. Obviously, miss a block chance, and the armor will help somewhat. For the champs, they are still going to take some damage here, which is not exactly cost effective. This unit also, in particular on the far side here, taking some pretty substantial damage in this early skirmish phase, considering this is... Uh, you know, like a very expensive unit for Norska, although I kind of understand why you would not just take a regular Marauder frontline, uh, given they could just get face charged here by some Wild Riders, which is still going to happen to the champs anyway, to be fair. They'll handle it a lot better than some regular old Marauders would. Ice Horns moving in, they've also got, uh, well, I thought they had extra armor, what do they get? No, just perfect vigor, which is something. Um, Unit Psychology, I believe, as well. But fighting here in the woods won't necessarily afford any kind of bonus to the Norskins, of course. They're literally fighting trees. So, there you go. <laughs> They're moving in, fighting some Skin Wolves. His own magic attacks and the magic attacks of the spirit four spirit units, like the Dryads, right? All very good against these Skin Wolves. Again, they, too, rely on their physical resistance, like the Forest Spirits do, but don't have their own innate magic attacks. No lore of fire here to give uh, Flaming Sword of Ruin. Of course, fire damage still very much applicable against all tree-type units. Um, we have to take the Firebark Elders specifically to shore up that weakness. Not something that's applicable to all Forest Spirit units. And again, this Ancient Protector is only really on the single entities, and I don't know, you might sometimes see a Tree Man Ancient. It's not super common these days. It used to be a, like a sort of not very common pick ever, to be honest, but uh, it was more common, I feel like, in the past. I don't know if I've ever seen one in Warhammer 3. Now someone's going to send me that because I said that, which is great. Uh, but the regular Tree Men 2 are a fairly uncommon pick, if not basically unseen. Durthu is going to be the most most popular pick by far out of units with this new Ancient Protector trait. But anyway, Rider Rohan sort of defending his Deepwood Scouts here, doing a good job of utilizing the speed of the Dryads to intercept champs and other marauders whenever they get close they haven't able to, been able to exploit those gaps to get to the deepwood scouts in the back but uh, wolfric the wanderer looming this fight against the wild riders also once the marauder spears support shows up uh, even despite all the damage they're taking then plus the skin wolves is still able to do a number on these wild riders and get some really nice value trades 
Um, likewise, you know, more Marauder Spears here. Because the, the champs took so much of the fire and are now kind of zoning the Swift Shiver Shards, these spears, which would normally be quite vulnerable to the Swift Shiver Shards, just basically get decked in a couple of volleys, actually can come in here and get some good support value against these Wild Riders and other large units. I mean, they're not world beaters by any means. They're probably some of the worst spear units in the game, to be honest, in my opinion. But they do have spears, so they can do the spear thing and poke these large units. But uh, more skin wolves coming in for a charge here as Swift Shivers continue. Ooh, nice lore of boats. And I say nice. It's got some pretty decent contact. Maybe a tiny bit of friendly fire on those regular Marauders. But, uh, ooh, brutal flock of doom just basically ends this entire <laughs> uh, Norskin formation as they also get swarmed and just taken out by the Dryads. I mean, Dryads just such a great, great unit overall right now. The speed, attack, magic damage, and decent armor, physical resistance. And, of course, synergy with Durthu and other Treemen in melee. Um, yeah, not that it mattered too much in this specific battle, but it definitely can matter a lot in certain matchups. So, cool to see that. And, yeah, it makes Durthu considerably stronger against other, other big threats that do magic damage. Of which there are a number. Still, want to be careful about not sending him in against the... Uh, like, I would say he's probably... I don't know. I'd have to do some Lord Duels. Lord Duels often involve a lot of RNG, but I don't think, just, again, based on kind of feeling, maybe you guys can correct, he would beat uh, like Scarbrand or... I mean, Scarbrand is obvious with the fire damage, right? And it's just insane stats, but there's some other kind of top-tier combatants that I don't know he would necessarily beat. Even someone like Kolek is not necessarily commonly seen, but uh, definitely, like... Uh, Kugath, it just has way too much HP and stats. It's probably going to be a problem, even with taking away his magic damage. Um, yeah, there's a number of big, scary lords that I still don't think Durthu could quite tangle with, but it definitely helps. I'd be curious to see some of that testing, and not that the game ever works like that in practice. I always have to stress, in case you haven't seen too many of my videos before, uh... I don't think that testing is the most indicative of performance. Not that testing and testing videos are completely useless. They can inform certain decision-making in battles, but just, yeah, that's not how the battles go. That's not how the game is played in practice. But uh, how the game is played is with multiple units doing all sorts of various different things and a high number of variables, including player skill, deployments, uh, all sorts of different things. To be honest, faction matchups, there's a lot that goes into it. But all that being said, here... Variable is uh, Wolfric's trying to run away and reunify with some of his troops. He's got some Marauder Spears, the Bale Fiend out there on the side. The Skin Wolf's also having some major problems, but at this point, the balance of power is tipped pretty decisively right over Rohan's favor. He's used up all of his ammunition, but uh, yeah, the Norskin player going to throw in the towel there, not wanting to see what happens in the rest of the game. He's pretty much done for at that point anyway, but uh, the Swift Shiver Shard's very, very strong. Definitely a lot of value there, not to mention uh, the... Wild Riders also contributing quite nicely. Durthu himself, 2,000 damage value, 18,000 damage dealt. Very respectable. Definitely a lot of DPS. Uh, pure, pure value-wise, probably doesn't pay for himself. And again, that's one of my biggest hang-ups uh, previously with Durthu, and even still maybe an, an issue with him. It's just that he is pretty expensive. And uh, let's let's just check in terms of base cost. Um, kitted down, or, you know, maybe a couple different loadouts we can look at. But... Uh, very good stuff from Radar Rohan. Appreciate him always for sending in those great replays. Now, some of you don't for whatever reason, but that's just anyway. Uh, yeah, the so looking at his kit, 1800 base costs. So with nothing, technically he would have paid it for himself. But already with Sword of Death, we're going to that 2000. You've got Flock of Doom in there. Um, I guess he just comes preloaded with that uh, that blessing of the the Protector of the Ancients, wherever it is, somewhere in here. Yep, Ancient Protector. So that's pretty nice. It's mostly for him, himself. Again, because of Dryad's mobility and sort of Wood Elves' playstyle, you're not often going to get benefit on Dryads. And, I mean, maybe some matchups you want to, like, blob him up with another uh, Tree Man and <laughs> Firebark Elders and try and fight in Doom Blob, but I just don't think something like that is going to be particularly viable. Um, yeah, I don't know. This seems a little bit, a little bit weird. But maybe it could work. <laughs> Definitely don't think so. Does he not also have Call of the Woods? I don't think so. But uh, anyway. 
it's definitely nice to see that. I mean, Durthu kitted down, like I said, to about around about 2,000, so pretty close to paying for himself there. But the more stuff you come in and add here, the definitely more expensive he's going to get. Lamentations of Despairs right now is not worth it unless they change something dramatically, which I don't believe so. But a Blessing of the Ancients did get Spell Mastery, so if you're on a map with a lot of forest where you can try and get engagements with Durthu or have him cast spells, you know, let's say you're up against a missile faction, he could maybe take cover in the woods, maybe cast some spells, get some increased uh, spell mastery for extra damage, a little bit of extra damage on Flock of Doom, although you don't necessarily want Durthu to sit and cast spells the whole time, obviously, you're paying a lot for this great melee prowess. Uh, Vanguard deployment also is a thing that all the tree units have that can be a factor in certain maps and matchups, so... Yeah, well, overall, I have to say, pretty happy with where Dur Durthu's at. Most Wood Elf Lords, I think all the Wood Elf Lords, to be honest, have something going for them and maybe an argument for a uh, place in certain types of builds, which is pretty nice. Uh, you guys can feel free to, to disagree. Maybe the Ancient Tree Man's the one you're like, eh. Although, since he also has that uh, ability now, right, he has 48 melee defense, which is not incredible. His offensive stats are pretty poor, but he is a life caster with 110 armor. Uh, almost 10,000 HP, you know, maybe, maybe you go with like a Dwellers and Earthblood build, but I don't know. You could, you could probably make it work. Is it the most optimal thing? Definitely not. That's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.